Are you a better than average driver? If I had to bet, I would guess that you answered yes. In fact, there was a study in the 1980s that took a survey of Americans. 88% of them reported that they were a better than average driver. And before you start thinking that this is just a case of American exceptionalism, the same study also looked at a survey of people in Sweden, and 77% of them also said that they were a better than average driver. Now, I know it's tempting to look at these statistics and conclude that people are silly and they have an overinflated sense of their self. And indeed, when you hear about this in the media, that's usually the way it's framed. But what if I told you that those sorts of numbers are perfectly plausible given rational thought processes? Let me illustrate. Imagine that there were 50 drivers. 25 of them are good drivers, and 25 of them are bad drivers. By virtue of being good, those good drivers will have zero accidents per year. In contrast, of that group of 25 bad drivers on the right, exactly six of them will have an accident over the course of one year. Suppose that all of these drivers don't know whether they are good or bad. They just know that there's a 50-50 shot that they could fall in either camp. But they do have one extra piece of information. After a year, they know whether they got into an accident or not. So imagine that after that one year passed, we surveyed each of these 50 individuals and asked them, do you think that you're a better than average driver? Well, that takes us to our puzzle. After that one year, what percentage of drivers think that they are better drivers than half of the entire group? While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to apply Bayes' rule. Are you ready for the solution? Part of this is straightforward. Six of those individuals are going to get into accidents. The only way to get into an accident is to be a bad driver. As a result, we know exactly what each of those people is going to report when they take the survey. They are going to be bad drivers, and we don't have to think about them again. Now think about what's going on in the minds of the remaining individuals. They don't directly observe whether they are good drivers or bad drivers. They're in the dark. But even though they did not get into an accident, they have new information. They were safe over the course of an entire year. And they can use that information to update their beliefs about whether they are good or bad drivers. In particular, there is a 50% chance that they started out as a good driver. And conditional on that, there is a 100% chance that they would not have gotten into an accident. Meanwhile, there is also a 50% chance that they are a bad driver. And conditional on that, there would have been a 76% chance of having no accident over the course of that year. Each of these individuals can use those probabilities to calculate their posterior belief that they are a good driver. Specifically, that figure is 0.5 times 1 divided by 0.5 times 1 plus 0.5 times 0.76. In the numerator, we have the probability that the individual is a good driver multiplied by the 100% chance that they are not in an accident. The denominator captures the total probability of not getting into an accident. That's 50% of the time having been a good driver and guaranteed safety, plus 50% of the time being a bad driver and still getting lucky that 76% of the time. You work out what that probability is, it's about 56.8%. Thus, when asked whether they think that they are a good driver or a bad driver, 
the rational bet is to say that they are a good driver. Ultimately, that means that 88% of drivers in our survey are going to report that they think that they're better than half of the drivers out there. And it's not due to some sort of inflated sense of self-ego. That's actually what they should think. What's happening here is that driving is not giving good, consistent, immediate feedback. Instead, you're very rarely told that you're bad. And when you get that new information, you're inclined to update your beliefs in a very negative way. But when you don't get any new information, you're only slightly increasing your beliefs in a positive way. But that bumps a whole bunch of people over that 50% threshold and explains why a vast majority of individuals think that they are better than the average driver. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.